Hi, this is uh, Matthew Robert Payne, and I just want to say uh, hello to you, and um, I want to share um, just something that's um, been on my mind over the last few weeks. Um, the title of this video is uh, Jesus Wants to Have a Second Coming in you uh, so many christians are looking uh for the rapture they're looking uh, they're looking forward to a second coming of jesus so many people are waiting and praying and expecting a revival for the Holy Spirit to come in such power that so many people get saved and there's an outpouring and uh, everyone comes to God. It seems that the Holy Spirit in dwelling people and uh, the teachings of Jesus aren't enough for people. Uh, it seems that uh, the Holy Spirit has got to come in power uh, through revival uh, to clean this world up. Uh, that individuals, uh, you and me, can't take responsibility. Uh, as far as I know, when you walk down the street and you see a homeless person collecting money, you've got a choice to stop, say hello interact with that homeless person, give them some money. You've got a choice. Or you can walk past a homeless person and totally ignore them like the priest and the Levite uh, in the Good Samaritan parable. You can just, like many Christians do, just ignore those people. Just pretend that they're not there. And if they actually look up at you, and ask you, have you got any spare change? You can feel really comfortable just lying to them and saying no. If you're in a restaurant or in a public place at a bus stop or something, and a heroin addict or a homeless person walks up and says, have you got any spare change that you can spare me? You can feel totally comfortable saying no, I haven't. And uh, I know, um, I use cards all the time and use uh, uh, the credit cards all the time to pay for things. I only go to shops that will allow me to pay by credit card and uh, shops like bakeries and stuff that need cash um, don't get my service. So these days I don't carry cash. Uh, and uh, years ago I used to carry cash so all the homeless people got $2 here and a dollar here and $5 there because I had cash in my wallet. I've got two books um, uh, called, one is called Influencing Your World uh, for Christ and one is called 13 Tips to Becoming the Light of Christ. <laughs> Both of those books teach how you, a Christian, can uh, use lifestyle evangelism uh, to win people to Christ, uh, to uh, share the gospel. And they're really good books. I, I, I wish that I could advertise to the world that they're free and give every single Christian a copy for free. I uh, certainly don't need the money. I prefer hundreds of people get the book for free, thousands of millions of people get the book for free. I'd love that. I would love that. Um, Jesus wants to be in you. Jesus, through his Holy Spirit, wants to manifest in you. Jesus wants to speak through you to people. Jesus wants to use your arms and legs 
and hug people, touch people, be with people. Jesus wants to come right inside of you and minister to people. Jesus wants to have a second coming in you. Now, when you uh, pray, I've got six books on the prophetic and there's one book I've got, Prophetic Evangelism Made Simple. And in that book, you can read about how having the gift of prophecy and sharing prophetic words with strangers is a really effective way of opening up doors and uh, pl sowing seeds in people's lives for the gospel. Uh, in that book, there's a prayer at the end uh, to receive the gift of prophecy and the invitation for you to prophesy the first time over me and I'll give you feedback. I wish, Moses wished it too, that uh, every person uh, could be a prophet, every person could prophesy. Uh, I wish that everyone who was a Christian uh, could prophesy. I wish that everyone could be comfortable not only hearing from God for themselves, but be able to deliver messages from God and Jesus uh, to people. Um, I'm like a weapon uh, every time I go to the shops. Uh, there's encounters that I have with people where Jesus speaks through me. Now, regardless of um, whether I prophesy to a person and give them a direct message of God, I'm always encouraging, I'm always engaging people in conversation and uh, encouraging people and blessing people with the way that I talk. So I'm a real weapon. Satan uh, doesn't appreciate me going out in public and he certainly doesn't like me approaching strangers and giving them a prophecy or encouraging them. In those two books, Influencing Your World for Christ and 13 Tips to Becoming the Light of Christ, I talk about these things and how to do that. Jesus, Jesus really wants to come inside of you and minister to people. He wants to use you. Uh, for some of you, you can learn how to heal. Some of you, you can learn how to heal and heal people. Some of you uh, can uh, learn how to prophesy. And I encourage uh, on Wednesday night, 7 o'clock Eastern time in America, I've run a prophetic class. And you're welcome uh, to contact me on uh, Facebook and uh, key into that class and learn to prophesy. Uh, Jesus really wants to touch people. And so many people, so many people have a fear of the word evangelism. So many people get locked up and scared and worried when you mention evangelism. But what if I said you don't have to win a soul to Christ? What if I said you don't have to lead a person in a sinner's prayer? Just tell a girl who's got a lovely dress on that she's got a lovely dress, especially you women. Instead of looking at her dress and saying to yourself, I wish I had a dress like that, she looks so nice, why don't you tell her? You look beautiful in that dress. Don't ask her where she got it, so that, you know, which is women speak on you saying you're going to go to the same shop and see if you can get a nice dress. Don't ask that question. Just say that dress looks lovely on you. How long have you had it? Um, and use, uh, and what's that fragrance you've got on? What's that called? Uh, I really love that too. And use that as a jumping, uh, something to jump off to start a conversation. What brings you uh, to this shopping center? What do you do for work? And you can just ask questions. What does a person do for work? Are they married? Have they got family, got a boyfriend? And what do they do when they're not working? So remember those three questions. What do you do for work? Are you in a relationship? And what do you do when you're not working? 
And if you ask those three questions and have a conversation with a person and you wait, they'll ask you, what do you do for work? And then you can share that. And what do you do for fun? Well, the most fun I have is when I go to church. I really enjoy church. Oh, what's that like? What sort of church do you go to? And that brings it into a Christian conversation. What do you do for fun? And have you got family? Yeah, I've been married 26 years. I've got a lovely husband. You can engage people and practice bringing Jesus into the conversation, bringing some Christian message into the conversation. And uh, I uh, teach you in those books uh, how to do that. It's, you know, I've, I've written a book recently, Why Revival Tarries, and uh, it's, it's like a 70-page book uh, with me explaining why we're not going to see worldwide revival really soon. And what, what is holding revival back? And I encourage you to read that. Uh, the reason I quote so many books is not so I sell books because every time you buy a book of mine, I make 30 American cents. So I don't really care about making that money. I suggest resources because I've got 55 books and there's a lot of information in my library of books that you can learn. So how can you be Jesus? You may think, I can't be Jesus. Well, the Holy Spirit resides in you. The same Holy Spirit that raised Christ from the dead resides in you as a Christian. And you've got the opportunity to be indwelled, led, inspired and encouraged by the Holy Spirit to say things. The Holy Spirit gives me the encouragement, the compliment to say to each person. He helps me recognise that this person is really good at serving people. This person is very efficient at this. This person has a really nice haircut. This person uh, really looks good in this top. Uh, this guy looks really good in this suit. Uh, this guy seems a bit stressed um, and, uh, and I can encourage him. So the Holy Spirit partners with me and together we go and touch people's lives. Jesus wants to have a second coming in you. You'll notice in the parable where <clears throat> the king had a party for his son and he invited all the guests and they wouldn't come. They had their excuses. One had uh, had to bury his father. One had bought some land. One had just got married. Um, then he said, well, go out into the highways and the byways and get all the evil people and the sinners and compel them to come in. He sent the servants out to do that. And the servants are you and I. It's not the pastor. It's not the evangelist. It's not the prophet or the apostle. It's you and I. And he sent us to go and get those people on the highways and byways. Did we go? Where did we go? We went to all the places that sinners hang out. We went to the movies. We went to bookstores. We went to brothels. We went to pubs. We went to gay bars. We went all these different places to invite people to the party. It's time, it's coming time where Jesus wants to send us out to be a light, to be a witness, to share the love of Jesus with people. I really want to encourage you, get those two books I mentioned, read them. Get Prophetic Evangelism Made Simple. Get Why Revival Tarries. Get those four books that I've mentioned in this video. Go and get them, read them and apply them. I encourage you. Jesus wants to live in you. <coughs> Jesus wants to <coughs> co-labor with you. Jesus wants to save some more people. Jesus wants to love on people. Jesus, want you, Jesus wants you to be a demonstration of his love. Why can't you be that for him? If you've enjoyed this video and uh, you're a member of YouTube, 
Uh, I'd really appreciate your comment down below. If you want to request a prophecy off me um, or uh, get a message off your guardian angel, uh, and know your guardian angel's name, uh, and go down in my website and uh, request an angel message. May God bless you and keep you. I hope this was really encouraging to you. I'd love to hear your feedback. God bless you.